Pastor Michael asked me this week if I would share a little bit of a testimony about relational discipleship. And so I thought about that this week, and this is kind of where the Lord has led me. So when I surrender, now I will say I do have to read from a sheet of paper. You can ask them, or you can ask Lynn, or you can ask anybody, and they'll tell you I'll chase a rabbit in a heartbeat. So I will be reading this. <laughs> When I surrendered my life to Christ in November of 2004, there was no discipleship available at the church I was attending. I, know that, I knew that if the doctors were right, I only had six or seven years left on this earth, and I wanted to hear God say when I got there, well done, my good and faithful servant. So I jumped into the Bible head first, knowing nothing about what I was doing. I took every Bible study class offered. I took every class promising to teach me how to pray. Um, I went to every sermon. I took notes every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. I went down a few rabbit holes of false doctrine along the way, but thankfully I found my way back onto the straight and narrow path. When all was said and done, I felt like I was fairly knowledgeable in the scriptures and I wanted to help others along the way to keep them from struggling to find the way as, as much as I had. I began teaching a discipleship class for any believer who wanted to know more about the Bible and the Christian lifestyle. But as students cycled through that class and moved on, it seemed like something was just missing. I grew bored with teaching the same biblical doctrines over and over each cycle. And as groups began to decrease in size, I finally threw in the towel. Well, let's fast forward to January of this year when Pastor Michael asked me to be a facilitator with Bobby and Pam for the women's retreat. And by the way, I was very honored. Thank you. I agreed. And so we started to meet every Wednesday evening at my house for supper and a time of planning. We started off examining the scripture in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, we all know that scripture pretty well. It's the last thing Jesus said to his disciples before ascending into heaven. We hear that scripture and we think about evangelizing the lost, sharing that good news of Jesus Christ with them. And yes, that is a big part of that scripture. But the biggest part of that scripture is where it says, make disciples and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Churches are notorious for leading folks to the Lord and then unintentionally leaving them to wonder, what now? What I have learned since Pastor Michael started walking with the three of us in January is that discipleship is not a class and it's not a program. Think about how Jesus walked with 12 men day and night for three years, pouring into them along the way. They shared their lives together, and they built relationships that lasted well after Jesus ascended into heaven, even until their own earthly deaths. When COVID hit, I walked away from that other church that I had been attending to protect my husband and my parents and myself. And it was honestly an easy thing to do. I'm kind of ashamed to say that, but it, it was. I had been attending church there for 15 years. And even though I had been an employee there for 13 of those years, as well as having held many, many different volunteer positions within the church, I had very few relationships with folks outside those four walls. I wasn't an integral part of anyone's personal life, 
and no one was a part of my personal life. Relational discipleship fixes that. It is the glue that holds churches together. It's what churches have been failing to do for decades and even centuries. When Michael and Bobby, Pam and I meet on Wednesday evenings at my house, we share a meal together talking about life and bonding with one another. Once we've shared a meal, we settle into the den and we transition into a time of discussion surrounding one of the nine priorities of a disciple in relation to God, each other, and the lost. Each week, Michael models how to walk with someone in discipleship using a common language and a common practice. He uses repeatable patterns that can be replicated because the goal is to walk with someone until they have internalized that common language of the Christian lifestyle and that common practice so that they can confidently walk with someone else. And the process continues. When I walk with someone to the point where they are prepared to begin walking with someone, then I begin walking with someone new. It's all about multiplication. And the church gets stronger. The church bonds. Over time, the church develops a relational discipleship culture. One of the best things to happen for me during this time of relational discipleship is that I have begun to feel closer to God. I had drifted away during the years of extensive service to my previous church. I had become so busy with church work that I had stopped focusing on the reason for it all. Now I'm once again growing closer to God. Relational discipleship really helps me to keep God in the forefront of my thoughts. There's accountability there, and that matters. There's always more than one way to skin a cat, though. Some of you have been evangelizing and discipling the ones that you lead to the Lord for years, and that's wonderful. But for those of us who have never done that, Pastor Michael is using the relational disciple-making kit in order to have commonality in the process, a common language, and a common practice, which can definitely be replicated. This process does take time to get all throughout the church. But think about this. Right now, there are three women and two men walking with Pastor Michael. I'm not sure where the men stand at this time, but the three women have already begun to walk with three more women. That's six. In a few more months, those six, including the three of us originally, will begin walking with another person. That's 12. Then in a few more months, when we're ready, those 12 will begin walking with another. That's 24 women walking in relational discipleship. And a culture of discipleship is being born into our church. It takes time. But as Pastor has told us time and time again, go slow, build deep into relationship. Sure. He could have a class every Sunday afternoon for nine or ten weeks and teach you how to use the toolkit. But the most important aspect is the relationship you build with the people you walk with. And you can't get that from a class. You're speaking Jesus into one another's lives. But it's in a replicatable process. If you're excited about this and you want to get started doing something right now, then start keeping that daily appointment with God where you read your Bible, meditate on what you've read, talk to God about it, let him talk to you about it, and make time to pray, which is just talking to God every single day. Then when someone asks you if you would like to walk with them in discipleship, you'll be ready to take that next step. Remember how I told you it was surprisingly easy to walk away from my old church during COVID? I can honestly say that now, 
I would have a very hard time walking away from the people that I have bonded with. I went going to cry. <laughs> Over King Jesus through relational discipleship. Thank you.